Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Well, I'm playing around with a little LM317 voltage regular circuit here. Now, I'm actually building this because I want it in, um, integrated with this uh, lithium battery pack here. Okay, so this is a charger module. So you plug a USB into here and it charges the battery up, it's got a charge control on it. And that's basically it, okay? Now what I wanted to do is actually build this along with this little circuit here into my Fluke 540B to replace the old 1.5 volt mercury cell. And so I thought I'd just do a little video on this LM317 because it's not behaving quite the way you'd expect one to work. Now, I found it is actually sensitive to the input voltage, which I am surprised by. Now, if you look at the online calculator and stuff like that, it'll tell you what resistance values to use and that sort of thing, and, and you can calculate roughly what you want to use and play around with it. Okay, now I've actually got my little resistance box just here, which I was using as a substitution, and um, I found the values were close, but I had to tweak them a little bit, not too bad. But what I had a lot of problems with them being way off, and I figured out what it was was the input voltage was actually affecting the upper voltage. Now you think a voltage regulator like this, it wouldn't really care that much, but it is relative. It's quite interesting. So my um, I've got this set to 1.5 volts. You can see here 1.5079, so close enough. For those resistor values we got there, which I think was a I don't remember what they were now. <laughs> I don't remember what they were. So 1k there. 200 ohm there, so 1k is the effectively the R1, I think it is, um, which goes from the output to the adjust pin, and the 200 ohm is going between ground and the adjust pin. All right, and um, power supply back on again. So the actual circuit itself, without any load on, is drawing 1.3 milliamps, and generating 1.508 volts, which is well, certainly good enough. I mean, I don't know how accurate the mercury battery voltages actually are. I mean, the state is 1.5 volts, but it might be plus or minus a bit. I don't know. But the main thing is that, that they use because they're really stable voltage. It didn't drift. The voltage stayed pretty much consistent through the discharge cycle, which is why they were used. Um, unfortunately, you can't get mercury batteries anymore. They're you know because they're mercury is considered you know, kind of kind of dangerous. So that's you just can't get them anymore. They're gone. So this circuit here is to replace that. Now what I was trying to demonstrate, I probably need one more meter set up actually. Okay, there we go, another meter set up. So there's the input voltage right now, which is four volts for my power supply. So you can see the upper voltage, the current, and the input voltage. And if I change the input voltage, I'm going to change it 100 milli, uh, millivolts at a time. You see the output stays pretty much constant, the input stays pretty much constant, all right? And as I come up, it's all looking good. And then suddenly it starts to change around sort of seven and a half volts or so. It drifts off. See now it's not 1.5 volts anymore, and it's just increasing with the input voltage. So you can see that it's actually not a true regulator in that way. You know, when it's at its lower in this region, it's fine. But you can see here, it's you know it's now 2.2 volts. Well, that's like 50% more with 22 volts input. Well, that's not what I want. So if I go back down to this region again, back down to the millivolts. All right, so back down to four volts again. All right, and if I go down, so it's still pretty consistent. All right, so once you get below that threshold, now it started dropping off. Now it's two point six volts there. So two point seven. Well, two point seven looks like the threshold 2.6 is dropping 2.5 2.4 is starting to go down now right so that's kind of what you expect in a way I mean there's a dropout voltage so really so sort of 1.1 volt more is kind of what you want for the dropout voltage all right so because I'm going to be running from a lithium cell which is right at 3.7 volts I only really need a range from say, I don't know, 3.3 up to, I don't know, what's the charging voltage on this? 4.4 on it, something like that, I don't know. But 
that in that range there, the output voltage is rock solid, which is exactly what I want. So, regardless of what that battery voltage is going to be, the output voltage will be fine. So even though it's got that issue there, where the output isn't rock solid right through the whole range, then um, it'll still be fine. Now, 1.3 milliamps. Uh, I mean, how many hours is that? 2,600. Oh, it's almost double actually. So it's 200 hours. So that lasts 200 hours in theory, but um, yeah, it's not quite what I'm after. But this is all going to be switched anyway, so it's going to be switched on, on and off because the unit has actually got Nike battery packs in it. But you know, I'm digressing. So if you want to check out that video while I'm doing this conversion, um, then make sure you subscribe and, and look at it, look look out for it coming up. This is just about this N317 and the way it behaves with input voltage versus the upper voltage setting. And although the online calculators are there, they're only a guide, they're not 100% accurate, so you can't build it to that to specification. You know, it may vary a bit, you know, from device to device. In my case, the calculators are wrong. Close, but wrong. Especially with the input voltage. So, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Make sure you subscribe. Share the video if you think other people might be interested in these voltage regulators and how they work. This little quirk they have. And, um, yeah, catch you around. See you next time.